Coming up on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. The Beef Quality Assurance Program works to build consumer confidence in beef production practices. Today, we'll introduce you to outstanding cattle producers, marketers, and educators who best demonstrate BQA animal care and handling principles. Now, from the Denver headquarters of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, it's NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Auctioner. Now, if you're looking for insight and ideas about the best practices in raising cattle and producing top quality beef, then you're in the right place right now. Over the years, beef producers across the country have embraced the Beef Quality Assurance, or BQA, program, in part because it's one valuable way to keep beef demand strong. And today, we'll take you to farms and ranches all around the country that have been honored for their efforts to implement and support BQA practices. Here now to talk more about the Beef Quality Assurance Program is Ashley Coles. She's the Executive Director of the Minnesota State Cattlemen's Association, who also serves as the state's BQA coordinator. Ashley, welcome to the show. Thank you. I know in addition to uh, your work at uh, the Cattlemen's Organization, you're also a beef cattle producer yourself. And so tell us how, in your opinion, the BQA program helps ensure both safe and high quality beef. Yeah, so the BQA program is the gold standard for best management practices for producers um, in every sector of the beef industry. And so as a cattle producer, it's nice for us to know that there are common sense best management practices that are based on sound science uh, that we can implement on our farm every day to tell the story about what we do and how we do it. And you know, it really is a cooperative effort between NCBA and, and state cattle organizations like your own. Uh, tell us how those two entities work together to implement BQA. Yeah, so I wear a lot of hats for the beef industry in Minnesota. So as mm -hmm. the executive director of our state cattlemen's association and the BQA program, which is administered through our beef council actually in our state, um, it's nice to have that state and national partnership because the BQA is a national program that's implemented on a state level. And so to have that consistency of uh, from state to state of what the BQA program is um, and how it's implemented so that state and national partnership is really important. So Ashley, walk us through the BQA certification process. Yeah, so in Minnesota, there are two options to get BQA certified. Um, there is a in-person or face-to-face -face meeting, whether a local Cattlemen's Association hosts a meeting um, or a local vet clinic hosts a meeting. And I go to that meeting and um, basically go through um, what BQA is and how to get BQA certified and we do uh, the actual certification there they take the test and um, then there's also the online option uh, where you go to bqa.org and you go through the online modules and then you too can get certified that way as well. So, so that's a really nice benefit because you don't have to actually travel away from your farm or ranch to get certified that's right? That's right yep. Mm -hmm. Tell us uh, what's, what's some of the feedback you've received from Minnesota producers who've gotten BQA certified? You know there is um, there's some people who get nervous about going through BQA certification because there is an assessment at the end or a test or a quiz or however you want to call it, right? So people do um, get nervous about that. Uh, but the feedback that I get from producers is, uh, you know, they are happy with the, the common sense approach that BQA has. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, a lot of folks actually do go home and say they did change something or they didn't realize that uh, maybe we should have been doing it this way versus that way. Um, and knowing that the BQA program is more than just injection sites, mm. um, that there are a list of best management practices that they can implement on their farm. Absolutely. And let's talk about consumers for a minute. Does this matter to consumers? And, and have you gotten any feedback from consumers directly? Yeah. So uh, now more than ever, I think consumers want to know where their food comes from, but they also want to know how it's raised. And so, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, the BQA is the gold standard for how to do things on our farm. And so it gives us a platform uh, to talk to consumers about what all cattle producers are doing across the country and that there's that consistency uh, from sector to sector and everybody's doing it the same way. That really is important. And one last question, I guess, for you for now. Uh, what would you say to folks who may be watching our show who have not yet become BQA certified? So I guess I would let people know that it's a simple process and uh, there's a, it's a common sense approach to what you can do on your farm each and every day uh, to kind of help tell beef story about what we're doing. Um, and it's the right thing to do, right? I mean, everybody is uh, implementing these BQA best manager practices because it's common sense and it's the right thing to do. So. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that perspective. And we have a few more questions for you a little <laughs> later in the show. Each year, a variety of cattle businesses and individuals are honored for their commitment to the principles of the BQA program. 
Today, we want to share with you the stories of the 2018 winners of the National BQA Awards. Let's head to Minnesota for a closer look at the Feed Yard honoree. Located in Rock County on the western edge of Minnesota, Black X Farms is a family-owned cattle feeding operation that's now in the hands of brothers Peter and Jay Bakken. Black X Farms, Inc. Black X is an acronym, Bakken Land and Cattle. Bar X is our brand. My great-great-grandpa came over on the boat from Norway, and then uh, my grandpa farmed, and my dad took over from my grandpa. Uh, my dad and grandpa were milking at the time and raising some pigs. My dad didn't want to do that all of his life, so he decided to move across the road when that place came up for sale and started feeding some cattle. So Jay and I are we have fourth generation farmers, but uh, second generation cattle feeders. In addition to the feedlot, the Bakken family grows crops and has their own cow-calf herd. Peter and Jay have expanded the cattle feeding facilities to a capacity of nearly 3,000 head. Each day they strive to provide the highest level of animal health and comfort. You know, the whole beef quality assurance thing to me is not just about us. It's about uh, animal care and taking care of the animal. You know, we've, we've all figured out that the better you take care of the animals, the better they'll perform for you. It seems like there's always a there's always something you can make better, and that's what we're working to do. So when it comes to the BQA best management practices, uh, you know, they don't just check things off the list. Uh, they actually live and breathe it every day. The list of best management practices implemented at Black X Farms is long. They invested in a covered commodity shed to protect their feed. They work to get their pens clean and bedded, and they check their animals closely each day. The Bakken family also took action early on to become BQA certified. Because it's the right thing to do. It, it just is. I mean, it's, and if you do them the way you're supposed to do them, you'll be financially rewarded for them, so why not do it? That's the beauty of BQA, is it's all really basic stuff. Quiet animal handling. A lot of that has to do with facilities. The facilities that we have are not fancy, but they're very functional. From the guy in the back, to the guys at the chute that are doing the processing. Everybody's on the same page as far as how we're gonna handle these cattle. Jay and Peter are kind of my gold standard for how things are done in my practice area. And so it's nice because they're willing to talk to some of my other clients. If there's something that works at Bakken's house, I can tell one of my clients, hey, you should call Jay Bakken and talk with him about how he handled this situation. And I can kind of use them to influence how some of my other producers are going to do things. The Bakken family switched from a manual to a hydraulic squeeze chute and saw a significant drop in feed intake disruptions after working their cattle. They track performance data closely and work with their veterinarian and nutritionist to ensure their cattle are performing their best. That's why I say this whole BQA thing is not just about Black X Farms, it's about the veterinarian and the nutritionist and the banker and everybody that's involved in it so that you can take all this information and have collectively he and I and all those involved sorted out to make your operation better. Everybody's on the same team. It's a, it's a team approach to getting the calves that came in last night to be the, the fed cattle that are going to the plant tonight. Another unique attribute is the Bakken's commitment to being transparent in all they do. They welcome visitors and provide updates on what's happening on the farm to a local school classroom. One of the things that I'm doing is I'm an, an adopted farmer with fourth graders. So as far as reaching to the consumer at an early age, uh, we've taken videos and gone to the classroom with the feedstuffs and, and um, things that we use on our farm on a daily basis and just hands-on, uh, see-for-yourself kind of things for the kids. They know that taking care of the animals and doing things right is how you get good performance and they've, they've led the example of that. And like when we've had tours and stuff here, you know, everything is just, it's not neat just the day of the tour, it's always well kept and well managed here. So that sets a very good example to others when they do come visit. 
Whether it's unloading cattle in the middle of the night or making sure the water tanks are clean, on Black X Farms, each BQA practice they follow is another step toward building trust with consumers. And it's easy to see that this family is committed to taking every step they can to produce healthy cattle that yield high quality beef. You're always looking to improve. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the beauty of being your own boss and having your own operation is there's always something better you can do. And I think that's the reason that you have all the people on your team and you have a beef quality assurance program and you work with associations like the cattlemen and the state cattlemen and the beef council and your local vet. I'm a believer in the beef quality assurance program because it gives you some accountability and it also is something that the last word, assurance. To me, why are we out here doing this? We're out here doing this to provide a quality beef product to the consumer. Every day, the NCBA staff in Denver and in Washington, D.C., work on issues that matter to cattle producing families. You can join in the fight for our industry's future by becoming an NCBA member. Just call 1-866-233-3872 or you can visit the website ncba.org. We're just getting started as we learn about BQA award-winning cattle operations. Coming up, we'll head to Nevada ranch country for a look at the 2018 cow-calf winner. Stay with us. We'll be back right after this. Don't miss the 2018 NCBA Legislative Conference in Washington, D.C. It's your opportunity to meet with congressional leaders and federal agency influencers to let them know where cattle men and women stand on critical issues that impact the cattle business and our way of life. Make plans to be in Washington, D.C. April 10th to the 12th for the 2018 NCBA Legislative Conference. Details at ncba.org. No matter what job I've got to do, my John Deere 5E tractor can do it all. Whether I'm cutting, moving feed, or building a fence. Using my 5E means my work gets done faster at a price I can afford, and that works for me. Welcome back. We're highlighting the operations and individuals who have been honored for their commitment to the principles of the Beef Quality Assurance Program. These award winners strive to provide consumers with confidence that they're buying a safe, wholesome, high quality product when they choose beef. Now, let's meet the cow calf winner, the Bentley Ranch in Nevada. Set in a picturesque valley in northern Nevada, Bentley Ranch was founded in 1997. Although the name is relatively new, the ranching operation has actually been around much longer. Bentley Ranch has a long history. It's actually part of the uh, Dangberg Ranch, and they were the pioneers and settlers here in this valley. My father purchased part of the Dangberg Ranch some years ago and uh, began to modernize it with water usage, sustainability, and I've been running Bentley Ranch now for five years and have continued that tradition with a main focus on bringing our beef quality up to worldwide standards. Today, Bentley Ranch is managed by Matt McKinney, who oversees this 60,000 acre cow-calf operation. We have uh, about 1,200 head of mother cows today. We keep our own heifers, we replace, keep all our own replacement heifers and uh, buy outside bulls. Um, our cow herd is a base of black, black, white face cow herd, and we use a little bit of Charlet as a terminal cross in the cow herd. Bentley Ranch is guided by the principle that great beef can be produced in an ethical and environmentally responsible way. Proper care of the cattle is one cornerstone of this philosophy. Our preventative health care is our number one priority. We watch whatever new technology is out there. We really are in conjunction with our local veterinarian and then the veterinarians that are behind the products and talk to them a lot. Uh, try to prevent as much health problems as possible. 
Animal handling is another priority. All Bentley Ranch employees are BQA certified and trained on proper stockmanship to help reduce stress on the cattle. We work really hard on our low stress stockmanship. We use a lot of horses. Uh, we have a lot of big areas. We use a lot of horses. Um, when we do have to come to the confines of the corrals or the feedlot, we still try to keep that momentum of using horses, relaxed. Nothing's in a hurry. You know, we still got tomorrow. We'll be all right. I believe in the Beef Quality Assurance Program because it makes sense. The principles are good for everybody to follow and there's success behind the program. We've followed the program and we've been able to bring our cow herd to a healthier state, more consistent state, and a product that we can be proud of behind it. And I think the Beef Quality Assurance is the foundation to all that. Recently, the ranch expanded in a new direction, selling their beef directly to consumers. Bentley Ranch relies on the principles of the Beef Quality Assurance Program to help reassure consumers they're getting a safe, wholesome product. We have our own branded beef program where we're raising the cattle here, selling it ourselves, self-distributing to retailers, wholesalers, and uh, we have an internet store where we'll ship that stuff overnight. Before we started marketing it direct to the consumers, BQA was important. I knew that this animal was gonna be a, a steak or a roast on somebody's plate, but now that we are talking to our consumers directly, we use BQA as a protocol, as something, hey, we do this. You can trust that this is a wholesome product because we follow these principles. I think if you talk to anybody in this area who has purchased Bentley beef, um, they have a really good reputation, not just in terms of how they manage uh, the ranch and the cattle, but in the product that people consume. There's you know, very high-end restaurants in this area who serve Bentley beef exclusively for that reason. Uh, so I think the fact that they've really adopted many of the principles that we talk about in Beef Quality Assurance is all part of that really high consistency, high quality product that they ultimately produce. Bentley Ranch has an open gate policy and they're always willing to discuss their innovative management techniques, which ensures they're producing only the highest quality beef. We're very proud of what we do. We're very proud of all the quality assurance protocols we go through, our health protocols, and we are very open. People want to come talk to us, they want to come tour the facility. Please come, we're, we're very transparent. We want to show them that we're doing a good job because we want you to enjoy the product. Bentley beef is, well, we like to think of it as the best quality in the world. Uh, we match any other beef out there. We do that not only in the quality of the beef and the cows, but how we treat them. We have humane standards. We respect our cattle very much and think we owe it to them to uh, give them a nice home and make sure the quality of life is good until we need them. Quality is a, a, a major priority for Bentley Ranch and any of our operations and the beef cattle herd from time of birth to the time that someone's enjoying that piece of meat is our most important job. To learn more about the Beef Quality Assurance Program, including information on how you can get certified, at no cost, I might add, visit the website bqa.org. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll take you to Colorado for a look at an award-winning dairy operation. Don't go away. We'll have more right after this. Do you know all you need to about working cattle? Did you know there are proven methods that can reduce stress for the animals, for you and your crew? Now there's an easy way for you to learn from the experts who can help sharpen your stockmanship and stewardship skills. In interactive sessions, you'll learn better ways to work cattle more efficiently, skills that can help put more money in your pocket. Find out more and locate an upcoming event near you at the website stockmanshipandstewardship.org. What does it mean to be an American cattleman? It means you have what it takes where it counts, on the inside. At Ritchie, we understand that. It's what's on the inside that defines us. We share the same values, ingenuity, commitment, sense of pride. These are the values that built this country. They're the values that built this company. Ritchie, proud to be a partner to the American cattleman since 1921.
did you know the Beef Quality Assurance Program also includes the dairy industry? Those animals will one day be part of the beef supply chain. It's important that the beef that comes from dairy animals is free of any quality defects so that it meets consumer expectations. We take you to northern Colorado for a look at the 2018 BQA Dairy Award winner. Just south of Fort Morgan, Colorado is Kraft Family Dairies owned by Chris and Mary Kraft. This multi-generational operation includes two locations just three miles apart. Badger Creek Farm functions as our special needs operation. So any cows that are a little slower, maybe need a little bit of TLC, they go to the smaller operation and the ones that are doing their own business and just happy being milked three times a day, they stay at Quail Ridge. We're shipping between 480 and 510,000 pounds of milk a day between the two facilities. And uh, we are milking about 56, 5,700 cows every day. Over the years, innovation and passion have driven Chris and Mary to make constant improvements to their operation. The facilities were designed to promote a free-flowing environment that encourages low-stress movement from the cattle. So the idea is that the cow never has to actually stop going any place and wait for somebody else. So we have two-way traffic as the cows travel to and from the dairy barn. So there's like a constant flow of activity that's going on and the cows move in a really quiet, happy way. So there's not a lot of pressure, not a lot of chasing and not a lot of yelling and, and uh, uh, pushing cows. And so it's really limited the amount of injuries that we have. The Kraft family has a commitment to cow comfort. The freestall buildings use compost for bedding, which is changed out once a week to help maintain cleanliness and prevent disease issues. We bed cows every Monday right here. We make their, change the sheets, if you will, put bedding in the stalls and uh, put some lime in there to kill any bacteria before we put the uh, recycled compost back in the beds. Everybody sleeps better when you make your bed at home, so our cows sleep better and produce better, as do our calves when they all have a fresh bed, which we do very regularly. The crafts believe in preventive management when it comes to the health of their animals and realize a well-trained workforce is the first line of defense throughout the entire production system. We always talk about being smooth, you know, being uh, not hard on the cows, you know. Talk to my cows with love, I say in Spanish. At Kraft Family Dairies, they understand the benefits of cutting edge tools and technology. The Krafts have invested in radio frequency identification collars, which allow them to monitor each of their animals and provide individualized care. All of our cows are Bluetoothed. And because we have that data coming in three times a day, every single day, we're able to figure out if that cow is doing what we think she's supposed to be doing. And because we're able to do things with a lot of handheld computers, when we walk up, we can link up with that cow and we can see that this one needs a pregnancy test, this one needs this vaccination, this one needs this other therapy. So we're able to sort of manage all that cow and all the activities all at once from one little device. And the cow is actually carrying that information with her. Providing milk is just one way these animals help feed a growing population. They will also one day become part of the beef supply. That's why the Kraft family follows the beef quality assurance guidelines to ensure both high quality milk as well as beef that meets consumer expectations. The Krafts really understand that although their uh, main commodity is milk, that these cows do eventually end up in the beef supply and so they take care through that animal's entire life cycle to make sure that they have a quality life, that they live comfortable lives, and that the beef that they're producing from those cows at the end is high quality and safe and wholesome. The whole quality assurance thing is about making sure that that animal is treated properly all the way through the food chain. Then when we do a, a, the harvest of the, the animal at the ultimate end of her life, you have a good product as well. So it, it benefited all the way through in every single segment of, of how we handle that cow. The Kraft family is dedicated to giving back to the beef and dairy industries, and Mary is a former president of the Colorado Livestock Association. 
Their advocacy, along with their commitment to BQA principles, helps reassure consumers they're getting safe, wholesome dairy and beef products. I want consumers to know that I eat this beef too, and I want to have a really wholesome, wonderful product for my family. And I think that it, um, my job as a, as a farmer, my job as a mom, is to make sure that you and your family have the same kind of quality food. Our goal is excellence at all times in, and in all things. You know, we try to be good with our people, very good with the cattle, and uh, very good with the land and the environment. And so we're always learning. We can always do better. Uh, but we think we've done pretty good so far. Cows are much more than a, a money maker for us. Um, they're a livelihood. They are uh, what we love to do. Saying that it's a passion is a very minimalistic thing to describe the way we feel about being in this industry and doing our jobs is because this is life. This is far more than a passion. We live and breathe this stuff because there's a certain bit of awesomeness that comes from being in this industry. Now, if you want to learn more about Beef Quality Assurance Certification, get insights on best cattle care and transportation practices, and more, just visit bqa.org. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, one of the leading livestock handling experts in the nation tells us why he's a believer in the value of the BQA program. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Don't miss your chance to read the National Cattleman. It's the official publication of NCBA, and it's packed with timely news and information about the issues and events that affect your cattle business. Plus, the National Cattleman includes producer education, cattle market insights, and more. A subscription is free when you become a member of NCBA. Join now by calling 866-233-3872 or on the web at ncba.org. There is a new world out there, revealing itself in unpredictable ways. A world that demands more from the land and those who grow, farm, and build on it. This new world calls for the ingenuity to get more out of it while preserving as much as we can. After all, to stay ahead of tomorrow, we need to be equipped for it today. You're watching NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, your source for cattle industry information and education on RFD-TV. We've been highlighting the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the operations and individuals who were honored for their commitment to the principles of the BQA program. Now, here's a look at Ron Gill, a well-known livestock handling expert and the winner of the 2018 BQA Educator Award. You never know where you'll find Dr. Ron Gill. He might be in the demonstration arena at a cattle industry convention or helping to train producers at a regional stockmanship and stewardship event. Or you might find him on horseback on his own cattle operation back home in Texas. I went to Angelo State and actually kind of minored in, in the, I wanted to go in the banking business and manage tr trust ranches is kind of what I thought I might do. And as I got opportunities to go into grad school and come through that, I discovered the livestock specialist side of things. And there was an opening in Dallas, and I liked horses and beef cattle, and that's what that primarily was. So I started in Dallas in 1984 as a livestock specialist. He's come a long way since then. In addition to running cattle in Texas, Dr. Gill is an animal science professor at Texas A&M University and is most widely known for his work in teaching others the best practices when it comes to cattle handling and stockmanship. And I met Ron in Denver, and he was doing the BQA presentation at the Cattlemen's uh, College one year. And I watched him, and I was just, I was just, it was so incredible to me how he could tell people in a real layman's term things that were very important. So he has a way of talking to anybody on a level that they could understand and take it home to the ranch. I'm always so impressed with the lessons that he imparts on producers, sort of the common sense way he shares um, animal handling techniques with producers and I think even the most seasoned ranchers and producers walk away from a clinic with Dr. Gill with 
um, a new perspective or a different perspective, even if it's something they've been doing for decades. So every one we've done, we try to talk about how that impacts quality and how that impacts safety and meat quality and everything else. So it, it's been a core tenant of what we've done in those. And we always try to bring that stockmanship component back around to this systems approach to managing quality. Over the past two decades, Dr. Gill has worked closely with the Beef Quality Assurance Program. He helped launch BQA in Texas and served many years as the Texas BQA coordinator. And he's traveled the country showing producers better methods of cattle handling. A lot of times we get focused on driving the body of a cow. That has no effect whatsoever. You've got to direct your pressure toward the eye or a little noise toward the ear to get any kind of effect. You know, one of the core tenets of BQA is cattle handling and stewardship. And so to me, it's a direct tie-in. And everything we do from a stockmanship standpoint will affect everything else related to beef quality assurance. If we can handle them better, we have less stress, less sickness, less need to treat, less worry about residues, injection site lesions. So that major component that's plagued us for years is injection sites. We can cut nearly all of that out. Uh, and if we can handle them easier in the chute, we can get our vaccines in them that respond to them better. It all just builds on itself. In addition to low stress cattle handling, Dr. Gill has also helped producers find better ways to design and use their working facilities, developed a program he called Shootside Manners, and worked to improve the way cattle vaccines are handled. We got into realizing people weren't handling vaccine right. Vaccination protocols and timing wasn't right. And this was before we actually had a cow-calf or stalker level BQA program in Texas. We had one at the feedlot level, but not cow-calf and stalkers. And you see a lot of coolers with holes cut in the side of them. Well, that was my idea back in 92 or 3, I think, after this deal and trying to keep vaccines out of the sunlight. No doubt consumers today are curious about how their beef is produced. And that makes BQA more important than ever. Dr. Ron Gill is proud of the role he plays in giving cattle producers the know-how to continuously improve their stockmanship and deliver on the promise of beef quality assurance. Ron Gill is passionate about anything that has to do with livestock production, cattle production. And his focus has really been on BQA and he really believes it. He really believes in it and believes in the program. He is um, someone who I think has benefited our industry in so many ways uh, and I think is just a really important educator for beef quality assurance in our country. One of the best things about VQA is that whatever somebody develops, everybody gets. And it's been a great tool to speed this process along. We don't keep reinventing the wheel. The ability to, to affect change in people's lives and hopefully a positive most of the time uh, and be able to work in an industry that I love always been very satisfying. In 2018, you can find Ron Gill on the road at regional stockmanship and stewardship events all across the country. The training sessions provide hands-on learning in the area of beef quality assurance and low-stress cattle handling. If you'd like to attend one of these sessions, just visit stockmanshipandstewardship.org for details on when and where you can find an event. And if you'd like to stay up to date on key issues and events from D.C., one way is by becoming a member of NCBA. Members receive the Beltway Beef Newsletter, a weekly report straight from Washington that gives an up-to-date summary of top policy initiatives that will impact your business. Joining is easy. Just call 1-866-233-3872 or you can visit the website ncba.org. Still ahead, we'll wrap up our look at the BQA Award winners with another visit to Minnesota. And later, we'll check in with the always entertaining Baxter Black. Stay with us. 
Do you know all you need to about working cattle? Did you know there are proven methods that can reduce stress for the animals, for you and your crew? Now there's an easy way for you to learn from the experts who can help sharpen your stockmanship and stewardship skills. In interactive sessions, you'll learn better ways to work cattle more efficiently, skills that can help put more money in your pocket. Find out more and locate an upcoming event near you at the website stockmanshipandstewardship.org. I think a rancher has to be a steward of the land. There's nobody else that can take care of land better than a rancher. When we switched over to the uh, Perina products, it was a step in the right direction. The difference we see in the cattle is the consistency of their nutrition. The cattle hold their condition a lot better throughout the whole year. It does make a difference that we can see, day in and day out. As we've seen, the National BQA Award recognizes outstanding beef and dairy producers that best demonstrate animal care and handling principles as part of the day-to-day -day activities on their operations. The awards program also extends to livestock markets, where sound cattle care and handling is also critical. Let's head back to Minnesota for a look at the 2018 Livestock Market winner. Based in Minnesota, Central Livestock has roots that go back nearly 100 years. Today there are three Central Livestock auction markets in Minnesota and one in North Dakota. The mission of our company is to help small and mid-sized producers market livestock in the best possible way that they can. In 2016 we marketed livestock for almost 15,000 producers and we marketed just under half a million head of livestock. About 300,000 of those would be cattle, either cattle that we've sold for customers or have been involved with order buying for customers. Central Livestock brings buyers and sellers together in a region where producers offer a mix of both beef and dairy breeds to be sold at each market. Minnesota has a lot of dairy cows and we are in the largest dairy county in Minnesota here in Stearns County today with the Albany market. So we have a higher percentage of dairy and dairy cross, feeder cattle and fat cattle at this market and market cows. In the West Fargo market, we have almost exclusively blacks and, and colored beef cattle. Our Rock Creek market is split, as is the Zambrota market. And the serious dairymen have really embraced BQA and some of the other things that the dairy industry has promoted that really get at the whole quality of the end product. Whether selling dairy steers or beef calves, the leaders of Central Livestock recognize the value of the Beef Quality Assurance Program. I think it takes a really good leader um, overall uh, from management in order to encourage employees all the way down to the boots on the ground to implement BQA best management practices. And, and Jeff Reed is definitely a champion uh, for the BQA program, not necessarily just in the sale barns, but also when it comes out to reaching consumers. Beef Quality Assurance has been a program that Central Livestock and I have believed in for a long, long time. It's how we do business, it's how we handle the cattle, it's how we train our staff. From unloading to moving cattle through the auction ring, the business of a livestock market requires safe and efficient animal movement. And at Central Livestock, each employee is trained and skilled in handling cattle with great care. Hopefully you'll be able to witness that our staff handle cattle uh, swiftly like they need to to keep the flow moving, but also gently and through pressure and not uh, using sticks or prods in, in a way that would in any way damage the cattle. Our loadouts and our unloads are very customer and livestock friendly. We've done some work with Central Livestock when it comes to effective stockmanship or low stress cattle handling. And if you just stand in the back and watch those guys move uh, those animals up to the ring and through the ring, um, you can see that they've really taken time to adopt those effective stockmanship principles or the low stress cattle handling principles. In fact, Central Livestock markets have served as host sites for cattle handling demonstrations and BQA training for their own staff and for livestock producers. And to help add value to the cattle brought to the market, 
Central Livestock has implemented a VIP program that documents vaccinations and cattle that were raised according to BQA practices. One thing that is pretty unique that Central Livestock does is they do have sales that focus on uh, BQA best management practices. So there's paperwork that you can fill out to help add value to your animals when you bring them to the sale barn and it's announced. I think the, uh, the result has been that those cattle tend to sell higher, especially if they're in bigger groups. We've got some sales today that it would be an exception that they don't have a full VIP sheet filled out. And that's really changed over the last 10 years. From the yard to the auction ring to the front office, the team at Central Livestock is passionate about their business and the livestock industry. I love working for farmers and I love working with the staff that we've got here at Central Livestock. I'm also a cattle producer and, and have been my whole life. I'm proud of the fact that every week we're here to market livestock for our producers. That's what our staff get up to do. And they believe in the value of the BQA program to help set the industry standard for cattle care and management. We think it sets the tone for the right way to do business the right way to handle cattle, the right way to feed and vaccinate cattle so that we end up with the best end product possible in the beef industry. And joining us once again is Ashley Coles, Executive Director of the Minnesota State Cattlemen's Association and the state's BQA coordinator. Ashley, those are two very impressive operations and both from Minnesota. Uh, what's your secret? So I guess it's the, the culture of continuous improvement uh, with the cattle producers in Minnesota um, who have embraced the BQA program. And once you have a few of the uh, cattle producers elevated to the top, it is contagious uh, mm -hmm. wanting to strive uh, for that end goal of maybe winning a national BQA award. Yeah, I was going to say, and they get a lot of recognition, right? I mean, an NCBA convention and throughout the year, of course, on our show and so forth. What, what is the value of providing that kind of recognition and really highlighting what these producers are doing? So it helps us uh, tell the story of not only BQA, but the cattle producers in our state uh, with consumers um, that, you know, we have some examples of some really good cattle producers, but they're not the only ones doing good things. And so we hope to continue to highlight that by having more winners in the future. So tell us a little bit about the application process. I mean, is it a difficult or lengthy one? You know, it can be lengthy, um, but it's definitely not difficult. And I think uh, what I have found over the, few, over the past few years with nominating folks, that it's important that you actually get out to their farm, uh, spend a few hours there, and get to know how they do things, and then ask them tar targeted questions uh, about what their goals are for the future. And I think that's the real key to success, to having a, a good quality application. So, so I might follow up on that just a little bit. I mean, what advice or recommendations might you have for somebody watching our show who is considering applying for a BQA award? Yeah, so I would, I think the first step is reaching out to your state BQA coordinator and letting them know that you're interested um, in being nominated for a BQA award and talking to that state coordinator about um, kind of what your goals are as a producer and why you want to get uh, nominated for that award. And so what might you say to somebody who may be on the fence about even applying? Sure. Well, I guess um, it's a question that I get or it's a conversation that I have uh, with a lot of cattle producers when we're going through uh, our list of BQA certified producers on who we want to potentially nominate um, about the benefits of applying. And um, really, there's, there's no downfall to it, right? It allows us to tell their story and the story of all the cattle producers in our state. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty easy sell yeah. um, because there really is no downfall. And they really do serve as great examples and inspirational stories mm -hmm. for a lot of other beef producers, don't they? They do, yeah. Thank you so much for coming to the show, and thank you for all the leadership you've given to this very important effort, Ashley. Thank you. Now, if you want to learn more about Beef Quality Assurance Certification, get insights on best cattle care and transportation practices, and more, just visit bqa.org. Still ahead, it's time for a visit with our good friend, Baxter Black. Stay with us, we'll be right back. If you're connected with the beef cattle business, then you should like the NCBA page on Facebook. The NCBA Facebook page shares photos, news, and valuable information about the beef cattle industry. You can also follow the NCBA Twitter feed at Beef USA. So stay in touch with NCBA on Facebook and Twitter. Say goodbye to your toughest pasture and rangeland weeds for good. Because one product offers season-long control, 
handles the widest spectrum of broadleaf weeds, and clears the way for increased forage with greater grazing flexibility. So you get more beef per acre at a cost that can't be beat. It's Grazon Next HL Herbicide. And if it's in your pastures, plain and simple, weeds won't be. Ladies and gentlemen and followers of Cowboy Humor, I have carved another book for my funny bone guaranteed to tickle your humorous. Oh, sorry. The title is Scrambled Wisdom. Almost isn't is, is it? Which almost makes sense. It's only $19.95 plus shipping. Call 800-654-2550 or online at baxterblack.com. Here's a joke. What did he get on his IQ test? Drool. We know you're up before the dawn because the cattle rise before the sun. And you spend long hours in the saddle because the herd isn't always over the next rise. And you care for the land because you know it takes care of your family. And we know you do great work. And it's time to tell that story to the marketplace. I am I Global. I'm here to help you do just that. My friend Steve is in the avocado business, which I think makes him an avocadonist, or maybe an avocadonarian. The winter that the freeze hit Southern California, it wiped out his crop. Steve explained that 20 degree weather kills the fruit and it becomes useless. I commented that when old bananas turn black, the average mother with children will say, don't throw it away, we'll make banana bread out of it. So, I postulated, there must be some way to use old black avocados. There is a rum drink with pineapples, coconuts, and a paper umbrella called the piña colada. How about the ava colada? Maybe use something dark like prune juice, a coagulant like vitamin K, a miniature Mexican flag, and of course, the jalapeno. Overripe avocados might do well in a sushi bar. The menu special could read Today's special Choice of pimpled, pockmarked pieces of sea urchin or four ply radial pencil eraser garnished with avagui, a stringy, slightly off black mass that sticks to the roof of your mouth like mutton fat. There could well be a place for over the hill avocados on an airline in flight menu. Along with your three pretzels and peanut, you could get a hermetically sealed, naturally wrapped organic container of avo caca. The discriminating passenger would squeeze a dollop onto the lowered tray where it would adhere. As the aircraft yawed, pitched, and rolled, the avocado would slide back and forth, leaving a mucoid trail like a slippery snail. It would be served with a Q-tip and motion sickness bag. So many possibilities. You ever look at the hair care aisle? They've got conditioner and shampoo made with everything from pine tar to whale scat. Why not avocado poo? A little bit goes a long way. This is Baxter Black, Avocado Maniac, from out there. Well, thanks, Baxter, but I think I'm going to stick to my fresh guacamole. Want to rewatch an episode of Cattleman to Cattleman or catch up on anything you've missed? Then visit our YouTube page. You'll find replays of all of our shows filled with educational segments updates on issues, and producer profiles from all around the country. So check us out at youtube.com slash Cattleman to Cattleman. We'll have more right after this. Stay with us. Public land issues are somewhat unique. The Public Lands Council is um, valuable to the ranchers because it's someone out there that's speaking their language. Somebody has to communicate with the agencies, uh, the BLM, the Forest Service, Fish and Wildlife. Well, the Public Lands Council has provided incredible information and help, I think, to all members of the Congress. Everything from water rights to endangered species to wildfire to the need to actively manage the lands through grazing. 
and there's always a new battle coming up. Uh, the people on the land know much better what's good for them, their land, and their community than anybody in Washington ever will or ever has. So for them to have someone who is out there helping send their message and helping them keep their industry alive, that's super important for them. Uh, there's no way you can really put a value on what they do for us. So having someone in Washington, D.C., a, a voice for the industry, a voice for public land ranching, such as PLC, Public Lands Council, is huge. Welcome back. For this week's Legacy Photos, we're going to take a look at some beautiful images from our BQA award-winning operations. Want to see your photo on Cattleman to Cattleman? You can submit your favorite shots a couple of ways. Either message them to us on the Cattleman to Cattleman Facebook page, or you can email them to c2c at beef.org. Include your ranch or farm name and your hometown, and we may use them on a future episode. Well, that wraps up this edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Thanks so much for spending time with us. We'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.